at Elevate Church uh, with my good friend, Dr. Jason Plunkett, who um, has helped several survivors who have experienced trauma. And I want to say thank you to every single person who is joining us, whether it's our Facebook Live on Elevate, Facebook, or our YouTube channel. And uh, we did this tonight because we know that uh, several people have, you know, jobs that they're getting out from late at night, or maybe you're driving and you're watching, or um, even just the traffic. Everywhere I'm driving throughout Santa Clarita, I just see news vans, and, uh, you know, you have the authorities that are driving around. So we wanted to come to you and just talk about what has taken place. And uh, uh, we're doing this because I want to be very clear. Today, we can all agree for us that live in Santa Clarita, uh, from the families to the students, whether you're a student at a, at a school or whether you're a parent, uh, we've all experienced a a very sad day today. I think that we can all agree that we're all in shock. I know that I have been shocked. in shock. And Dr. Jason, you're a part of Santa Clarita as well. Absolutely. And you're in shock. And, um, and we're in shock because I don't think any of us uh, ever expected for something like this to happen in our city. I'm sure most of us would say not in our city, yeah. but the reality is, is that something did happen. Yes. And, and we need to talk about it. And we need to pray and, and really seek the face of God who's compassionate, who's loving, who is ready to heal, who's ready to help in, in crisis and situations like this. And here's the truth. I, I'm not here, and Dr. Jason's not here to pretend like we have all the answers because yeah. we don't have all the answers. But I know that we have, uh, we have a God who uh, is so compassionate and so loving. And I know that not everyone may feel that way when crisis hit. When these things happen, people have a, a roller coaster of emotions, yeah. of doubt, fear, anger. I mean, just every possible emotion you can think of. Questioning their faith. Questioning their faith. Like, why, if God is such a good God, why yeah. did he allow this to happen? Yeah. And those are great questions. They are. There's nothing wrong with those questions. But uh, I want to thank all of the, the faculty of Saugus High School, the Absolutely. teachers. Thank you. The, the staff. Uh, the leadership, the first responders, what was so uh, so incredible was the response time. The authorities were there. The first were uh, three off-duty officers that yeah. were there in a minute because yeah. they were dropping off their kids. Yeah. And the rest got there within a two-minute. Like two so God bless Thank you. Our, our sheriff's department, yes. our fire department. We appreciate you. All of the uh, paramedics, uh, the hospital staff at Henry, Henry Mayo, Mayo. And, uh, and any other hospital that was involved, yes. thank you to every single one of you. We're praying God's grace, God's peace, God's direction and wisdom as yes. you treat the, the victims that are still in the hospital. I do want to say this before we pray and we talk. Um, we definitely have to pray for the victims that are in the hospital right now yeah. uh, that are still going through the process of being helped by the doctors. Mm -hmm. But we also have to pray for the families. I mean, just think about the families that uh, had two of their children, two children that were fatally taken from them. Taken from them. Uh, the pain, I'm a, I'm a father, you're yeah, a father. Yeah. You're, you're a father of little ones. Yeah. I'm a father of, uh, of young adults. And I can only imagine, if I could even imagine, the pain yeah. and the hurt and, and the anger that they're experiencing. But I also want us to think about the victims outside of the hospital. And I think this is what we can forget is that we have many of them and they're called students, students that are in Saugus High School that were also victims to Absolutely. something so tragic. Through vicarious trauma. Through vicarious trauma, which yeah. vicarious trauma would be defined as what? Yeah, it's, it's experiencing someone else's trauma. Yeah. So it's, it's anyone who witnessed it, anyone that was around, whoever even heard the gunshots. Uh, actually, you at home, if you just saw it on the news and you were an alumni of, of Saugus, that vicarious trauma can come up for you. Yeah. So, I mean, these are things that we, we have to talk about because it's so easy to suppress and just move on. Try and stuff and, it. And, and, yeah, and just think that, okay, you know what, uh, you know, well, this is our world. You know, we, we're, we're in a world, we live in a, in a country that's filled with tragedy especially massive shootings. Yeah. But uh, we need to pray for every single person that was affected by it. But I want to start off with prayer. 
Amen. And um, if you're listening, uh, you can please bow your head, close your eyes with me. If you're driving, then just, you know, play, pay close attention and just uh, let's get the, the heart of the Father in our hearts tonight. And especially those of you watching Amen. that are part of Elevate Church family, thank you so much for being here with us tonight and, um, and taking time to pray with us. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, we, we lift up the, the city right now, Father, because Amen. so many of us are still in shock. We still haven't been able to, um, to really allow ourselves to sit and to process what happened in our city today, Father. Lord, I'm praying in the name of Jesus that you would, that you would allow your holy comfort, Father, to begin to touch every single family of our community. The victims, Father, that are in the hospital right now, we pray for their health. We pray for the families that are there. Lord, we especially pray for those two families, Father, whose children are no longer on this earth, God. And it's so devastating and it's so painful and, and it hurts, Father. And we ask you in the name of Jesus that you would help us, that you would help us, that you would lead the leadership of this city, that you would help every single law enforcement, every city leader, every single pastor, every church, every, every person in our community to come together, Father, because though this was a major tragedy, Father, yes, we, we are still here close-knit together as a city. We believe that you are the God of redemption, and we pray that you would just give us wisdom as we talk tonight, as we pray tonight, Father, but we're asking you to help us. Holy Spirit, we ask you that you would bring comfort to those that are hurting those that are in pain those that may feel a sense of of agony father we just pray right now as people are listening whether they're watching us on live stream or listening to us on the radio or wherever father we ask you that you would touch every heart right now that they would experience just a little bit more of you tonight god that they would know that we don't have to lean into our own understanding father but that we could acknowledge you in a time of crisis and as we acknowledge you, God, I thank you that you give us the peace that surpasses all understanding because the reality is that we can't understand this. It's challenging, Father. So we pray, Father, for those that are listening with us. Everyone's praying, Father, in our city. We declare, Father, that your grace begins to fill every heart, every home, every school, from elementary to junior high to high school, every single school. Father, blanket this city, Father, because I know that this city is strong. It's resilient. Lord, this city loves you, Father God. And so we pray all this in Jesus' name. Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. For those of you listening, I want you to know that uh, this really hit home uh, yeah. for us, Dr. Jason, because um, it's not just news. It's not just something we're watching on, tel on yeah. television, which yeah. I'm sure the whole world, you were telling me earlier, this is a national, national. or international. People calling me from other countries. From other countries that are watching the devastation that we're experiencing. But for us and for many uh, people in our community, it really hit home because because we're such a, we're not that big of a city. I mean, we're a good size, but we're not that big. Yeah. It's very close-knit. It's very family-driven. We have a strong community. We have a strong community. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I know for our church, uh, we have some students that attend Saugus High School that experience the, the, the trauma of watching yeah. this take place. Um, in particular, two of our students actually witnessed the, the killings. Yeah. And you can only imagine the, the hurt and pain. And as I was just thinking about this, um, as we're discussing then this, you, you try to ask yourself why. Like, like, why did this happen or how could this happen? Yeah. And I want to start with the spiritual side of this because okay. it, we know there's a practical side, but there's a spiritual element to this as well. Absolutely. And the reality is we can blame it on all kinds of things, right? Yeah. Whether it's training, whether it's guns, whether it's mental health, all those yeah. things, okay? And, and it's, not, it's not to say that those things aren't topics that we should be discussing yes. and addressing mm -hmm. because they're important topics. But the reality is that you cannot explain evil you just can't explain that yeah you can't explain darkness no you know we 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 know as 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 believers those of you that that believe in god those that that believe in the mercy and the grace of god we we understand that god has been very clear that there's 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 an enemy and his name is the devil and he comes to steal kill destroy but but god through his son says but i've come to give life 
and and life more abundantly. abundantly. And and this moment, it doesn't seem like it's an abundant life. It it's a, like that. It's loss. Yeah. And and so we have to have the maturity, the spiritual maturity, but also uh, have the 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 tools to help people process through all this pain. And one verse that I want to bring to you tonight, and I want you to, you know, just note it down because this is a great verse for us right now as we're facing this tragedy. In Psalm chapter 34, verse 18, it says this. It says, the Lord is close to those whose hearts have been broken. And let me tell you something. We're all broken in this city. Yeah. Every single church, every single youth, every child, we've all experienced brokenness. And he says, and he saves those whose spirits have been crushed. We're broken and we're crushed. Our spirits are crushed. Our soul is crushed. Our mind, our will, our emotions, they have literally been crushed. It was almost like you wake up and, uh, for example, I, I got up this morning. I was up at 7 a.m. By maybe 7.40, I hear a helicopter yeah. that was over my house. And I was just thinking, you know, I wonder if there's another fire. And, and you know, I didn't wake up expecting to hear uh, a, a mass shooting yeah. in, in our valley here. I, I wasn't thinking that. And, uh, and I walked out and I looked and I'm like, okay, you know, well, let's just pray that there'd be no fires and that we pray for our firefighters, yeah. etc. But then yeah. you, you get a text from our, our city, which I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. And you start hearing them say, you know, um, a shooter on the loose. And, and of course, everybody's trying to gather their information at yeah. that moment. But no one really expects that. It became personal. It did. It became very personal. Yeah, waking up to uh, my daughter goes to a high school out here. So I received a text message from the school district, and then I, I received a phone call from her. And you hear these stories, and your heart breaks, and your heart aches constantly, um, but it became personal. Yeah. Um, I, 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 was a lack, I didn't have any words. Yeah. I didn't know what to do in the, in the moment. Yes. And then, of course, and then I got the call from our staff um, about our youth of, of, of you know, a few of our, of our students from our youth ministry attend Saugus High School. And, uh, and of course, we started connecting with the families and making sure that everybody was good. And, uh, and you know what, what do you say to the child? What do you say to the youth? Because I think so often, you know what, we want to put a Band-Aid over what took place. And this, is a, this isn't a Band-Aid moment. No. This, is, this is definitely, we need, to draw, we need to draw closer to God more than ever. Definitely, we need to draw close to him so that he can draw close to us. Absolutely. Uh, we need to draw our strength from uh, not only uh, God, but also the community, yeah. right? People of faith, churches. It's uh, time to identify your support system. Identify that support system. But the Bible says that there's a season to laugh. There's a season to work. There's all these seasons, but there's a season to cry. And yeah. I think that the best thing to do when you experience a crisis like this is, uh, you know, sometimes we, we can, and I want to be very honest and very frank, church. You know what? And you know, um, we like the truth. We like, we like hearing the truth in its fullest form. And here's the truth. You know, sometimes you can throw out a cliche word. And, and people, people don't want to hear cliche right now. The Bible says there's a time to cry. Absolutely. And this is where we can just not have to feel like we have to have an answer. Yeah. But just wrap our arms around someone and just hug, cry. Yeah. This is a time to mourn. Yeah. This is a time to hurt. This is a time to allow our our emotions to be expressed, right? Yeah. And, and, to, and to just be with families, because I'm telling you, everyone in this city in some way has been impacted by this. People are constantly just walking down the street texting or calling, or you're at Starbucks and people are, are on phone calls about this. Yeah, and, and just around the city, you see not only the students that were being interviewed on, on live television, but you see just the, the face and the, the, the shock. And, you can feel and, it. And you can, you can feel it in our city right now. You can feel it. And, and, it's, and it's a real feeling. It, it's, a, it's a feeling of this oppression that tries to come and, and just start hitting us because the reality is that something happened. Yeah. And, and this is an opportunity for us in this city, in this city of Santa Clarita, uh, to come together. You know, whether you're, listen, you belong to God before you ever believed in God. God loves every single Absolutely. one of us. And he's given us that, uh, that capacity to, to share, to love, to embrace, to care, yes. to be kind, to be, to be loving, and to be accepting. Yeah. And this isn't, this isn't a time to try to divide ourselves. This yeah. is a time for us you know, to really be the light yes. in this city. In a dark situation like this, in a dark moment like this, this is where we can be the light of the world. 
and, and the salt of the earth is what the scripture says. And, and the flavor of God right now is love, compassion, mercy, love, grace. But what do you tell students, you doctor, that, that has worked with so many, because uh, there's parents that are watching us right now mm-hmm. and listening yeah. that have been affected by this tragedy. And I know that I've talked to some parents today, and I know you're going to help some of our parents, and that have other psychologists and therapists that are going to help us here at Elevate Church. So if you have a student that experienced any of that trauma, please reach out to us. Absolutely. Uh, but what do, you, how do you, what, do you, what do you say to a student, a parent? Because it sounds like students are prepared for things like this when they go through their whole, um, you know, their scenario of an active shooter. Yeah. But as, as families, as parents, we're not prepared. Yeah. We don't know how our children are being prepared. Yeah. And then the parents not prepared. Yeah. So just talk about that a little bit. Um, I would recommend to just communicate. So it's okay to be sad. So it's normal to be sad in this traumatic experience. Yeah. It's, an, it's normal to have anxiety in crisis. Yeah. So oftentimes we stuff it because we just don't want to feel it. So we, want to feel, we don't want to feel it, so we act like it doesn't exist. So we go on with our day, we go on with our night, we have, we have dinner, we don't process it. Yeah. Uh, I was processing this with my eight-year-old today. Wow. I wanted her to know that it's real. I wanted her to be fully prepared. Ask her, what are the feelings that are coming up for you? Communication is going to be key. Yeah. Vulnerability is going to be key. Identifying your support system, your help, both professional, both friends, both ministry, is going to be really key in regards to solving this yeah. and, and helping the process. <laughs> One thing I do want to say is um, I was talking to a parent tonight, okay. and, um, and one of the, uh, the advice I gave her, uh, and this is one of the parents who, uh, whose child actually witnessed okay. the tragedy, is to really protect and guard your children because, you know what, I think sometimes, you know, people are people. People are going to want to ask a million and one questions. Yeah. Uh, what happened? Were you there? Uh, they, they want details. Yeah. And, and for, for those of you that are parents that do have students that go to Saugus High School, uh, I greatly encourage you uh, to be very, very, um, uh, I don't want to just use the word careful, but yeah. use wisdom in yeah. and, and, and talking to your child and saying, you know what, it's okay not to share the trauma. Because, you know, one thing is to share the trauma with, with a professional. Yeah. And then there's another thing to just share trauma with anybody yeah just for news just for news yeah. and what it does it, it really does hurt um not just the student but even parents who keep talking about it Absolutely. it's it's like reopening a wound that's already opened yeah and you're causing more more pain more bleeding to that wound and uh because what happens is you now have this open communication of what took place but the person you're sharing it with they don't have the expertise to help you through that process yeah. and you need to really pay attention to that. And uh, hey, listen, the scripture is, is, is so full of wisdom. It says, uh, be, be, be slow to speak and quick to listen. And, and so this is a moment where we have to be, be very, very slow to speak um, when it comes to our students, our kids that are sharing what took place here That's in a, uh, Saugus. I love that word. Because what happens is that it, it re-triggers or re-victimizes that child. We also call it a trauma reminder. So sometimes it's not, it's, it's not the perfect moment to talk about that trauma. Maybe they're not prepared to talk about it, or maybe might not be a safe person to discuss yeah. that with. Yeah. So what, parents, be careful with that. You, you can question your children. Your family can question. But when it's coming from outside sources, because there's going to be people from out of state and out of, other, out of the country that's going to want to know more about it. So just be careful, much like Pastor Mauricio said. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's so, it's so crucial to just do that. Just be mindful. And, and, you know, for us that are, are Christians, those that are believers, you know what, I'm telling you, I could probably give a Bible verse for every single thing I hear people experience and, and try to help them. And, and obviously, we're a, a, a Bible church, and we teach the Word of God, and, um, and we believe in God's Word, and we know that God's Word is the only thing that can sustain us. It actually, God's Word is what governs our decisions uh, as, as a family. But I also know that this is the time where we're not, we're not here to slap or throw scriptures at people. Uh, Use wisdom in how you do this. Uh, I want to reiterate, this is a time where we just embrace each other. Yeah, love. love yeah, because it, it, it's it, when, 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 you, when you experience a tragedy like what we just experienced, when someone is killed, yes. the reality is that no one knows what to say. Yeah. And it's okay not to know what to say. What's not okay is when we begin to open up and just start 
blabbing out a whole bunch of stuff yeah. because, and uh, you know, our hearts may mean well, yeah. but the reality is that right now, uh, people need to experience the love of God through how we embrace them. Yeah, authentically. Yeah, they, they want to know that we're there for them, yeah. like for real. Yeah. And, and that can simply be, you know, what, um, hey, you know, do you, do you want to go hang out, have a cup of coffee and just hang out and, and, and just, just try to connect and talk? And, and I'm sharing this because um, I know that we're going to be hearing a lot of this. This isn't something that's going to be forgotten, that's for sure. It's changed our life forever. It's changed our life forever. It's changed our lives were altered today. But I also know that we serve a God that is a God of, of healing, yep. a God of restoration, uh, a God of deliverance. And, uh, and there's no trauma too big for God. Yes. And, and there's no evil too great for God. God is greater than any evil that we're facing. And, uh, and we need to be reminded that we, uh, we as the church have an opportunity to be the church and to step in and step up. Absolutely. And to really show the, the goodness and the kindness of God through the love that we have for one another to begin with, but then also how we're going to love back our community. And so for those of you that are listening or watching and you're a Christian, this is a time where, where we can embrace people that they may not understand. And we're not there to have all the answers because nobody has all the answers. Absolutely. There's things that we just don't understand. Yeah. I mean, Scripture tells us that, right? We, we, it says, lean not on your understanding. That's what Proverbs 3 Verse 4 and 5 says, but acknowledge me in all your ways and I'll direct your path. And this is a time where we need the guidance of Almighty God to direct every single step, every path for our city, our community, our leaders of our city. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a very challenging time. And the one, the one thing with trauma is the fact that, that we sometimes don't feel trauma immediately. So there are some people who might feel numb to this. That's good. There are some people right now who may be like, well, I'm okay. I'm just fine. It's not, you know, it's sad, but I'm, 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 I'm fine. Um, and that's okay. That doesn't even mean that you're stuffing it. Uh, but that traumatic experience can come back up for you later on. Um, it, it could be a movie. It could, you could hear something. God forbid another shooting happens and then it re-triggers you. So just know that everyone deals with that pain um, and that sadness and that hurt differently. So have, have, allow, time, allow for time, allow for space. Uh, if someone doesn't want to talk about it, just let them know that you, you're there for them, that you support them. I have your back. Please let me know when you are ready. Um, and that support and that love is exactly what, what's needed in this community right now. And you know, while, while we're on uh, live stream, and please, if you have any questions uh, for Dr. Jason or myself, uh, you can message them on Facebook. But we already have some questions coming in. Here's one, uh, Dr. Jason. What are some common uh, denominators we can identify in teens and young adults who may potentially be headed toward doing something like the shooter did today? That's yeah. a good question. Yeah. What are the signs? How do I identify that? Well, sometimes the, the first thing you have to do is just pay attention. So there's signs out there, right? So it's a great question. So that person's off, uh, wanting to know the signs. But sometimes people are just aren't being mindful of them. They're not paying enough attention to our kids. So for one, before we even go there, I want to I say, parents, have dinner with your children. Have lunch with your children. Talk to them. Ask how their day is so that you can kind of see where these signs are even coming from, yeah. right? But some of the signs are just isolating. Uh, what, what's their media post? What's their social media post looking like? Yeah, I always tell parents that pay attention to what, because that's the platform where everyone's on. Absolutely. Every single day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week is social media. And there's too many platforms to, to stay in touch with everything. But I think as a parent, and, and obviously this is a concerned parent that is asking, mm -hmm. how do you identify that so that that doesn't happen to my child, um, is definitely pay attention uh, and yeah, you may get a little kickback from your kids sometimes, like, man, you know, you're, you're yeah. invading my privacy, teenagers, definitely. But it's not about invading privacy. It's about, I love you enough, I care about you enough to make sure that you have emotional stability, yeah. emotional health. And, just, and paying attention to what is the music that your child is listening to? What, what's, the, what's the message that they're saying? What's the clothing that it's saying? Is it, is it an a anti-anything uh, statement? You know, yeah. what, are, what, are, what are they representing? And those That's are lots right. of the signs that you can try. And, and what's changed? When your child was 13 and now they're 16, what, what's the dramatic change? Uh, no, see the difference. See their haircut. Um, see what they're wearing. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. That's good. And, and I think uh, another big one is, uh, is who are they spending most of their time with? Absolutely. Right? Because influence, hey, listen, we're all influenced by people. And, uh, and, and sometimes, you know, you do have some bad influences that come in in your life that, you know, start altering the way you think and you start seeing one of your children 
or a child uh, completely change their character, they start doing things that is out of their character, Absolutely. I think yep. that's a, a big sign. Huge sign. So pay attention to um, isolation. Uh, that's why it's so it's so key, and this is something that we we have shared with our parents and our congregation. Uh, my wife and I, we've always had when our kids were growing up, what was called family night, and family night was a night where they can keep it real. Yeah. And us as parents, we weren't going to judge them, yeah. hate on them, uh, make them feel uncomfortable. That was an open platform to say, hey, you can express anything you want. Even if it includes my wife and I, right? <laughs> yeah. Even mm -hmm. if it was going to be like, okay, we do the same. We're, they're they're going to you do the same thing, yeah. and it's so crucial. And and what that what that does it it helps you to create a habit of paying attention to what's happening in your child's life. It allows them to give them a platform to be free to speak, speak up. Because I think when we're uh, trying to, uh, you know, not allow them to express their emotions, mm -hmm. and sometimes kids. They want to be very real, like, man, yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling sad. Yeah. We should pay attention to that. Absolutely. It, it's real. If they're saying they're, they're feeling sad, then we believe that. We, we want to help our kids. Oftentimes, we have to be in tune with our own feelings because what happens, what I've seen with parents, is that they don't want to feel that sadness. Sure. So if you start feeling sad, I'm like, uh, oh, well, get over that, babe. Yeah. You just pray about it, and we'll keep on moving forward. Yeah. That's because that maybe I don't, want to, I don't want to look at my own sadness sometimes. So parents... Often, look at what you're struggling with. Check in with your own self as much as you want to check in with, with, with your child. I have some questions that, I usually, that we usually do. So, we, yeah, so I say, uh, I say uh, how do I feel right now? What do I need? Who do I need to forgive? What do I celebrate? What do I release? Who do I trust? Those are all check-ins that I'm, I and my wife do, I and my, and my kids do sometimes at the end of the week just to see where we're at. Good, good, good. Uh, another question that was asked is, as a community and as the church, how can we help teens that are slipping into this deadly emotional state? That's yeah, a great question. That's a great question. Uh, and th there's, there's lots of talk around that right now. And there's a common theme that says one caring adult. Like every successful child that becomes a, sex, a successful adult uh, had one caring adult. So we're, my, my goal is to raise a generation of mothers and fathers, yeah. and specifically fathers. Yeah. Oftentimes, we see young boys, we see young girls playing around, and we walk around them. We, we greet them. We're polite. But who are the mothers and fathers who are out there who are being role models and representing and throwing the ball with a boy or, or playing sports with, with these young people and being a role model and an influence? So I highly suggest that. I, I, I totally agree. Um, also, I, I think that, um, that once again, going back to paying attention to your child, I had a parent, another parent I spoke with tonight, I spoke with just about every parent, yeah. uh, that said, my child jumps in his sleep and is just wanting to sleep. Mm -hmm. And um, you know what? That, that is going to be a part of the symptom yeah. of the trauma. And, uh, and of course, this parent is wonderful. You know, they care about their child. But, uh, but realizing that it's okay to allow our kids to process uh, for a moment. It's temporary. It's not forever. Yeah. Uh, but definitely, uh, let's make sure to get them help. For example, another parent I spoke with on the way here to church said um, they picked up their child and they immediately went to a therapist. Okay. Which, if you can do that, yeah. And you have the ability and the capacity to do that, please. Yeah. I, 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 I championed that. I was, I was like, wow, that's incredible. And uh, and if you're listening out there and you do have a student that is feeling those emotions, Process where like, those feelings. yeah, processing those feelings. And, and seems a little disconnected, please know that, you know, here at Elevate Church, we, we're going to do our very best to help whoever needs help and, uh, and to provide, you know, um, a therapist, psychologist, someone that can sit down and have a conversation. I know that's something that you have a huge background in is dealing with trauma. Absolutely. And uh, so I want people to know that, that we're here for them. Yeah. Anything else you want to add about that? And just as needed, um, if it's not processed, it's going to come out. When I tell people that you're going to feel feelings, there are, there are people who I work with right now who are in their 50s who are, feeling, uh, who are feeling feelings from the time they were five years old. But they stuffed it so deep that they just said, okay, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to go to my grave with it. But they're now in their 50s still processing those feelings. So I highly suggest anything that's coming up for you or your child that you're able to, to share that. And professionally is great. Um, but if, you, if it has to be with a minister or a best friend, let it, let it out. Um, if you are concerned about information or sharing it, then journal. Uh, journal, um, type it in your phone, write in a journal. Uh, the, the goal is really to just get it off, out of your heart and out of your mind. Yeah, I, I just got another question right now. 
It says, how do we motivate other adults to get more involved with the youth of today? Yeah, uh, by being that example. So be that example and bring other people who are who have like mind and of like faith will do the same thing. So what I do on my block is when I throw the football with, with, with the boys on my block, I invite the other dads. Let's, yeah. let's do it. Let's, let's play dads against kids, you know, yeah. that type of thing. But I was able to role model that because that's not saying that those dads are bad in any way. Yeah. They just didn't think about it. Yeah. I thought about it. So then what I did was invite them. So if you're that caring adult, invite others to be that caring adult. That's good. That's good. Um, you know what? To a answer this question for me is walk the crowd slow. And I think we're, we're such a fast-paced uh -huh. uh, culture. And, and it's so easy to, you know, as an adult, to only focus on other adults. Yeah. And sometimes we overlook um, children, youth, yeah. adolescents, and not realize that, you know what, those kids... <coughs> Those are, that's the future leaders. Yeah. And, and I think, um, and, and thank you for asking that question. How do, how do adults, how do we connect with youth? How do we help? You know, we got to walk slow through the crowd. When you walk past a youth, a, a, uh, a child, someone, they're not invisible. Yeah. We have to acknowledge them because yeah. what's happening, there's, there's like a broken bridge between that generation and the older generation. There and is. the reason being is because, um, I think many of us sometimes as adults, we're, we're thinking like, oh, the, the youth of this society, this culture, they don't understand us old people. But you know what? I, I want to challenge you. You know, yeah. we shouldn't have that mindset. We should think, okay, you know what? Let's let the child be the child and let's let the adult be the adult. Mm -hmm. And how do we build a bridge from, from this generation to the upcoming generation? Yeah. And, and let me tell you something. It's communication. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it's simple. Yeah, engaging. Engaging. Yeah. I grew, I grew up in an era where there was a kid's table. Yeah. So as you like, you kids go sit over there or you go in the back room while yeah. the adults play or talk or have dinner. Yes. And now the hope would be that we could integrate kids. And of course, there's a place where kids can be and can't be, but how to integrate them. Ask through their opinion. What's going on? How are That's you doing? That, you know, involve them. Involve them. Yeah. And I like that. Ask their opinion. You know, last night, <clears throat> um, uh, I was, uh, we had a church service last night and I was going home and I... I do my best. I used to be a youth pastor, children's pastor, so naturally I, I love being around kids. Yeah, me too. I love youth. And, um, and I do my best. I'm not saying I'm perfect at it, but I do my best to always reach out to, to youth and be like, hey, man, what's going on? And high five them. And sometimes I'm like, hey, how are your grades doing? And, and I really do care. And yeah. they get shocked when you ask them that. Yeah. But when you, when you start investing time, yeah. investing time, see, um, Kids spell love differently. They spell yeah. it T-I-M-E. Yeah. We spell love, love. That's not the way, that's not the way kids, they yeah. want time. Yeah. And, and I think that if we just make time to have conversations, even like, hey, what's your favorite sport? Hey, you know, what's, what's your interest? What are your hobbies? Just conversation. Last night as I was leading, I had um, a youth approach me. And said, uh, Pastor, can I talk to you? Yeah. And I was like, okay, you know, it's late, yeah. but <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was real quick right here in the sanctuary. And, uh, and this, this youth, you know, had a serious question about relationships and how saddened this person was and how hurt. And these are emotions that our youth are experiencing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this person could have gone to another youth, but they didn't. They came to a grown adult yeah. and were asking like, hey, how do I manage this? Yeah. How do I deal with this? Is this normal? Is this right? So I, I encourage you that are watching on live stream. Uh, you don't have to be a parent to, to be a mentor. No. You know, if you're single, you're the best, my gosh, yeah. candidate to, to do something special and unique to say, hey, how can I serve in, in, a, in a community, whether it's in a church community, whether it's a boys and girls club, but how can I be a mentor? How can I make a difference and, and really start, making sure that we're giving our youth a voice uh, to express how they feel, to express uh, what they're thinking, and, and to really care to listen. Mm -hmm. And not just be like, hey, like you were saying earlier, hey, you go to the, the child table, we'll go to the adult table. And yeah. that, that needs, those days are over. Yeah. These, these are the days where we have to be the greatest bridge builders. That's what God wants. God yeah. wants to build the bridge from one generation to this next generation. We have to be the church. Yeah. We have to be the church. I call it, I call it authentic inquiry. 
Mm. So it's really just not, it's really wanting to know. You know, yeah. sometimes there's those fake questions. Yeah. Like, hey, how are you doing? And you don't really care. And then the person says, I'm sad. And you're like, oh, that's good. And you yeah. just walk away, right? No, that, that authentic really, like, how are you doing? Sure. What is new? Like you said, what's, how are your grades? Yeah. Really just caring and asking what, they're, what, what they really need or what they're about right now. Yeah, and, and just remember this. You know, it, God understands our complete humanity. He, he understands it. I mean... You read the scriptures, you see a, a part in the Bible where Jesus is actually, he's encountering children. He's engaging yeah. with children. The children want to be around him. And the disciples were like, you know, shoot, go away, go away. And Jesus yeah. like, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, don't, you don't neglect the children. Yeah. And he grabbed a child and set the child on his knee and said, faith is like a child. Yeah. And so if, if family, if children, if youth are important to God, how much more important should it be to, to us as grown adults, as, as believers, as the church? Um, you know, I look at everything that's happening, and, and, and I'm, I'm, you know, I got to talk to other pastors today, and, and, uh, and they're experiencing the same, the same shock that, that we're experiencing here. We're all, we're all affected. Every single one of us are affected by this. And this is a time where, where we can really be the church and... Um, and be the gospel, you know, to really be the gospel now. Like yeah. this is where this is where where the rubber meets the road. This yeah. is where, as believers, we have to learn how to apply what we say we believe. Yeah. This is where it became real. Be the hand and feet of God. Be the hand and the feet of God. I like I like to say uh, to be God's love in action. So if you want to show God's love, be God's love. Show it. Okay. Here's another great question. <clears throat> how can you get your youth to open up? And communicate because sometimes you know you do have youth that don't want to talk. Yeah, they just they just want to they want to shun. Yeah, and and especially not want to talk with the parent maybe. But yeah. what do you do with that? That's a great question. It's about being consistent and constant, and okay. and uh, so it's it's you're constantly asking them, can we talk? How can how can I help you? What's new in your life? Are you dating anyone? You know all these various questions, but constantly. So just because they push you away, they shun you, they they isolate. Um, you go the next day and you yeah. keep on trying. What happens is youth are thinking that you're trying to get them in trouble mm. or you're, you're about to tell me what, something that I'm doing wrong. Mm. So as soon as they say, oh, yeah. And, and also, here, let me say this. Parents, listen to your children even when they say negative stuff, yeah. right? That's even when they say, yeah, when my friend was smoking weed, yeah. you don't just say, oh, my gosh, and walk away. Or don't lash out. Or lash out on that person. Why are you hanging out with that person? You actually yeah. have that listening ear to yeah. want to know. And that's so hard authentically, to do as a parent. That's hard to do. You have to be able to be grounded yourself in regards to when you hear something like that. Yeah, because I don't think any parent wants to hear no, that. No, you don't want to hear something negative, that but you want to be there, oh, to be to hear God. it. And, and listen, uh, I, I can still say, I know my kids are young adults. You have little ones. But even today, um, I still see my kids like my babies. Yeah. Know, they're my babies. Yeah. I can, they can be 60 years old, they're going to be my babies. But, you know, even today, as I'm fathering young adults, uh, sometimes I hear things come out of their mouth. I'm like, ah, I really don't want to hear. Yeah. But um, the answer to this question is, what are the steps to, uh, to communicate with a youth that doesn't want to open is keep trying. Keep trying, constantly. Uh, be consistent and be a good listener. Be a good listener. Uh, and, and even telling your kid this, like, okay, uh, Johnny, let's just say the child's name is Johnny. Just say, Johnny, hey, I normally uh, like to always have the answer to all your problems. And I want to apologize because I'm trying to give you the answer before I listen to you. Yeah. So today, I'm just going to listen. I'm not going to give you any answers. Yeah. And I bet your child will be completely blown away, shocked, to think that you're not going to have an answer. Yeah. You're not going to solve their problem. Sometimes the youth, all they, wanted, all they want is to be heard. And, uh, and if you can just master that. To be a safe outlet. It's a safe outlet, and you have a fighting chance. Let's go to another question. Um, what are steps that we as a community can take to walk these students, walk the families, and our city through this trauma? Mm -hmm. What are some steps we can take? Uh, continue to encourage people to open up. Continue to uh, have the conversation continue for those who need it. Um, continue to do exactly everything that you've been saying today. Yeah. Showing love, showing kindness. This isn't the, te this isn't the, the time to debate over s policies or uh, over politics or anything like that. This is a time for us to kind of just hold hands and continue to uh, 
like um, be the community that we are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think for me, uh, to add to Dr. Jason is serve. Mm. Serve people. Yeah. I like that. Find a way to serve someone. Yeah. You know, today, uh, Dr. Jason and I were on uh, KHTS radio, and uh, let me tell you, uh, uh, the leadership at KHTS radio are amazing people. Yeah. Jerry Goodman Bless is just you. an incredible, incredible leader, her and her husband. And, uh, and all I said, because you know what, I see the, man, they're working hard. They're, they're trying to get us the media, the news. The they're trying to inform us, yeah. the 411. And we appreciate that. But for me, it's like, but I wonder who's looking out for them. Yeah. You know, because everybody's on the go, right? Yeah. And, and it's understandable. This is fresh. It's, it's hot off the press. I mean, this thing is, it's heavy. And the only thing I can tell uh, Jerry today and, and uh, was simply like, hey, if there's anything that, that we can do, please yes. uh, just let me know. We're here to serve you. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Just simply saying, can I help you with anything? Yeah. That goes a long way. That's how you help your community. You ask, how can I help? How can I serve? And, can, and stay consistent. Because a week from now, uh, or will we be? Will we still be talking about this, or will or will there something? Will there be something trending, and now we're forgetting about it? This is a time where we need to continue to uplift one another, and not just uplift each other for a weekend. Yeah. But allow this to be a new norm. Yeah, yeah. Here's another question: When, how, and who do you report your legitimate concerns to? It can be a battle to report concerns for some. And they're still typing away, but I, I, I totally understand this because yeah. what they're basically saying is like, man, if you see something, say something, say something, see something. If you see something, say something. And for those who don't believe in snitching, uh, say something, because what happens is it's not snitching; it's you're holding someone accountable. And you're saving someone's life. Maybe. Absolutely, absolutely. You're, you can possibly be saving someone's life, and uh, and I like that because I know that nobody wants to be held responsible if the information was not accurate. Yeah. But we live in a world today that is so dark, so evil. Um, and, and I mean, and I want to say this. Think about this today because I know that we can be so, um, we know that there's, there's mental issues. Yeah. And then we know that there's gun issues. And, and that's a you know, big old debate. We're not here to debate. Yeah. But think about this. It's pure evil. We have to get to the root of this. It's, it's, it's evil. It's demonic. How does a 16-year-old kid wake up on today? His, on his birthday. On his birthday. Okay, the shooter's birthday was today. Yes. How does someone at that age wake up and say, I'm going to go and do a massive shooting? How, let me tell you something. Um, I'm sure there are some mental and emotional and psychological, yeah. but it's deeper, deeper than that, and we yeah. can't. We can't keep shunning and ignoring the fact that that there is there is darkness in our world, yeah. and where does that darkness come from? Yeah. So, as a Christian, as a believer, we can't be afraid to say darkness and call darkness what it is. There's a devil. The devil comes to steal, kill, destroy. But God says, "But I've come to give life and life more abundantly." Yeah. This is where, when you ask a question like this, this is where we can give life. Yes. This is where we can save someone from themselves. Yes. Save someone else that may be hurt this is where we have to be the church this is where we have to be the community and and look out for each other and i'm passionate about this because you know what you 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 hurt for the victims but you also have to find some form of compassion you know for that 16 year old boy yeah, and and his mom and his mom who probably right now is you know in complete loss we don't know we can only speculate yeah. but but it's hard to be compassionate with, with someone who caused the trauma, who caused the, the, the hurt, the yeah, pain. It's true. But this is where we have to really just realize that, man. God loves be, beyond that, beyond that, Beyond that young man, beyond that child, man, there's something so much deeper. There's, some, there's darkness. There's evil. Yeah. And, and we have to realize that if not, we'll just keep, we'll just keep being blindsided. I mean, we, we, when, when you have a sickness in your body, when you're not feeling well, mm -hmm. you don't just keep going. No. If you start getting weak in your body, if things aren't working properly, you don't just move on. The first thing you do, you identify where the problem is. Mm -hmm. 
And how do you do that? Well, you go and you see a physician. The physician looks at you. Yeah. Physician does tests on you, yeah. blood work, maybe uh, a EKG, maybe a, an X-ray, whatever they do. But they identify the problem. I think that if we're not careful and we don't identify the reality that there is, there is an evil, demonic devil who hates our children. Yeah. You know, their future, their generation. I think we'll just keep being blindsided by things like this and not and not know how to pray. Yeah. You know, because we can't just pray. We gotta we gotta know what we're praying for specifically. Specifically. We need to know how to pray for our schools. We need to know how to pray for our children. We need to know how to pray for God's protection. We need to know how to pray the blood of Jesus who, that covers our sins. Amen. We need to know how to pray the authority with the authority that God has given us. Yeah. You know, to pray over our children before they leave the house. To pray for our children before they go to bed. Yeah. To equip our children with God's, God's instruction, God's wisdom. And, uh, and we need, listen, we need to bring God back into our homes. We need to bring right. prayer back into our community. And we need this. This is so crucial. Yeah. Uh, to answer that question in regards to who to reach out to, uh, school authorities, uh, any, anyone in the uh, executive position at a school, a teacher, even a teacher, uh, you go to your church and share that information. You go to their therapist and share that information. You go to law enforcement, fire, fire department. Um, that information uh, could also be anonymous, so you don't have to worry about someone saying that you said something. Yeah. It's very important. Data is what helps with prevention. Yeah. So that's the prevention work. Prevention is one of the answers to this, is knowing it before it even happens or knowing what's, 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 what's about to occur, and that's where that comes from. And, and listen, here's what the Bible says. Two is better than one. Yeah. Partner with someone that you trust. Share your concerns. And together you can both decide. So I'm, I'm a firm believer in partnership. That's okay. why I partner with you, Dr. Yeah, Jason. thank you. You're amazing. Here's another question. Um, how do you not allow fear to keep your child from going to school? That's a good one. Yeah. That's a, that's a tough one. Yeah. But how do, you, how do you not allow fear to keep your child from saying, I, I don't want to go to school? How do, you do that? how do you deal with that? It just goes back to scripture that, that, that the Lord didn't give us a spirit of fear. Yeah. Yeah, but of, of, of a sound mind and love and power yeah. so it's really just praying that i mean I, and i actually felt bad this morning because i prayed over my kids and then I, I and after the shooting i felt bad yeah and why is because i asked that the lord would encamp angels all around all their schools all three different schools and that and that they and that no weapon formed against them will ever prosper and then i instantly felt sad because why didn't i do that for all the schools in, yeah. in, in santa Clarita, yeah. right but that's what we need to do we need to we need to hit this with prayer uh, the lord is our protector he's our shield um, so there That's is, the and, and there's going to be some fear sure. and it's okay. It's just, what do you do with that fear? Yeah. And we need to conquer that fear. Yeah. And, and it's okay to tell your, your child, your student, Hey, here's the deal. I'm afraid to. Absolutely. Hey, as a parent, I would be a little bit nervous sending my child to school after experiencing something so traumatic. I personally do. Yeah. So I, and we can be, we're not these, these, these heroes of faith where nothing moves yeah. us, nothing. Yeah. No, listen, we're humans. We, 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 we believe in a God. We believe in his grace, his mercy. But God also understands our emotions. God, God's not afraid of them. And I think you need to let your child know that, hey, listen, it's okay to, to, to feel afraid, but you don't have to live afraid. Absolutely. You don't have to live that way. And, and I think a very practical thing I would encourage you to do as a parent is connect with maybe another parent that has a, a child that goes to the same school. Uh, I'm sure there's some friends that support. know each other. And then come together and become a support group yep. and talk about it. Yep. And then pray together as a family. Say, okay, you know what? We talked about it. We expressed our feelings, what we're afraid about. And let them say, what are you afraid about? Yeah. What are you thinking? And then we, 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 we let them talk. We bring encouragement, empowerment. But then we bring them back to the word. We pray for them. We, we let them know we're there. You let them know, hey, you know what? At any point of the day, if you feel uh, threatened, if you feel something, you call me. Yeah. You call me. You talk to a counselor at school. You talk to a teacher. You talk to someone. So great question. Here's some more questions here. We gotta, you got to get moving here. Um, how do you discuss the pros and the cons and the big picture of social media with children? That's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. That's social, good. social media is all over the place. As much as it could, as much as it can harm, it could actually be a great blessing as well. It is. Yeah, there's times where my my teenager will come back to me and show me a quote that she thinks I'll like, and it's an amazing quote, and I'm glad that she's looking at those type of sites. I don't know all the sites she's she's, she's yeah. on or following or who's following her type of thing, 
But social media could be a blessing as well. It's really just, once again, it goes back to what Pastor Marie just said, communication. What exactly is taking up your child's time? What are they focusing on? And um, and just knowing that. You know, for me, um, you know, social media was something my kids got on before they went off to college. Yeah. And for me, I, I've always been a person that monitors. And, uh, and I always, I've Function. always have spoken very, very real and frank with my children. Like, okay, so let me just tell you the real stuff. Yeah. Here, because if you don't expose them to the real stuff that's out yeah. there, whether it's, uh, you know, the temptation of drugs, the temptation of sex, premarital sex, yeah. tempt- all those temptations, if you don't tell them, someone else will. But someone else will give them the X-rated version. Right when I can give them the clean version with wisdom and insight, so I have always been a person that always exposes the reality and the truth of whatever it is that we're 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 having to address, yeah. and to not be afraid of it. And once again, parent, if you don't know how to do that, then you get around a community that does. I know here at Elevate Church, we have you know parent workshops. Yeah, we talk about this. We talk about bullying. We talk about uh, you know sex. We talk about addictions. We talk about all these things with parents so that we're able to support the parents. And there's many churches out there. There's many, um, you know, workshops out there that you can uh, go to. And we actually do hit social media because let me tell you something. It's, it's another, though it's a blessing, it's a cursing too, because yeah. then you have the, the, the evil, the, the bad guys that are using it to, to lure in our youth. Yeah. And then perversion comes in and stuff like that. Let me just go to the next. Yeah, okay. just go well, ahead. I just want to say, and, and just ground your child in who they are. Who they are, who they are in Christ, what's their identity, who they are. Because if not, then social media will. And the likes and the follows will. So you want to ground your child so that they don't need the social media to allow their their, their uh, self-esteem to be boosted. And and the truth is this, is that um, the the social media culture today is finally realizing that the likes has become a psychological torment to so many people. Now, that I don't know if you noticed, but today in Instagram... They got rid of the likes. Oh, I didn't know that. So people can't see how many people liked your post. I didn't even know that. Well, uh, I noticed that. I hope I'm correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I noticed that today on Instagram. Yeah. Like, I don't see the likes in it. Like, you know, you, before you would see like, you know, 30 likes, yeah. 1,000 yeah, likes. Yeah, yeah. Now you see nothing. You know why? Because they're realizing that there is an epidemic. Yeah. There is a psychological people are addicted to it. addiction to social media. And by, once again... Social media is, like right now, you're on social media watching this. <laughs> yeah. That's a blessing. Yeah. You're getting the 411. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's amazing. But you also have to understand that there's also some, some cursings that come with that yeah. if you don't monitor it. So pay attention. Another question is this. Um, what are obvious and not so obvious signs that my kid is battling depression? Mm. That's a great question. Yeah. Uh, being lethargic, sleeping too much, not sleeping at all. Not eating, isolating, just looking down, um, looking as though they're just not vibrant in any way. Uh, depression can look like so many different things, but um, uh, I guess the key is really to see what's, what's the normal status of your child and compare that to where they're at right now. Yeah. And if you see that there's anything feeling down or dreary compared to where they usually are, then that's the, the first signs of some type of depression. Yeah, that's a good answer. Um, hey, listen, I want you to know that this coming Sunday... Um, we can't just walk away from this and pretend it didn't happen. And so Sunday at all of our three services, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, um, I'm going to be continuing uh, this conversation. And uh, the title of the message is going to be Enduring Crisis. Yeah. And, um, and this is something that every single one of us as a church, we need to be well equipped on how to not just overcome. Because Jesus said that in this world, you will have tribulation. You will have trials. You will have troubles. So God expressed that. He said that. But he said, but be of, but be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. And so this Sunday, we want to share, how do I overcome? How do I endure through crisis? And, uh, and so I'm going to be bringing a message on that and giving, giving you some biblical truths, uh, biblical principles, and some biblical how-tos in order for us to uh, endure through this, this, this very, very tough moment that we're experiencing as a family in Santa Clarita, as, as a body of Christ, all the churches. And, uh, and Dr. Jason will be with me as well. And we're going to do some Q&A in the service, but I'm going to bring a message that I encourage you. Come, it'll be a time of worship. Yeah. 
Um, if you don't have a home church, we, we invite you to come and uh, be a part of it. And uh, for those of you that are listening right now that already have a church in Santa Clarita, I encourage you to pray for your pastor. Pray for the leadership yeah. of the church. Amen. Ask, how can we help you, pastors? Is there anything we can do? I'm so thankful that tonight we have volunteers that just said, they, I got calls and people saying, hey, can we do this? Can we do that? And uh, I appreciate that. It's just such a great feeling when you know that you're not alone in this. Yeah. And I got a good friend like Dr. Jason and other pastor friends and different people that we love. And uh, we're here for each other. But let me pray for us before we leave. And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you that, that you have equipped us. You have given us the, the tools needed, Father, to overcome the demonic, the evil, the darkness that we experience in this world, Father. And I just pray, Father, that there would be such a grace, such a mercy, that your love would overwhelm us in a time of hurt and suffering and pain and anger and all kinds of emotions. I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would ignite every single one of us, that you would do something special in us. Father, I pray as people are listening that you would just fill their minds and their hearts and all the parents that are asking all these questions. We pray over every single uh, child and youth and our young adults in our college here in Santa Clarita. We pray that you would give every single one of us, Father, the, the wisdom on how to, how to be a, a very strong-knit community and how to look out for one another. I pray that this would be a season, a time where uh, people all over Santa Clarita, that we would remove anything that divides us and that we would bring unity back in a time like this. And not just for a moment, but that this would be a lifestyle of unity, a lifestyle of unity of the people of Santa Clarita, the people of God, that we would all together come and and hold up the arms of those that are tired, those that are weary, those that are hurting, that we would be the church, that we would be the light, that we would be the city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. So Jesus, we thank you that you are the answer to every single problem, Father. And with that name that's above every name, you have given us, Father God, clear principles and tools to help us overcome, to overcome anxiety, overcome depression, to overcome the hurt and the pain, the anger. Lord, all this is in your word. You have laid it all out for us so that we can get your wisdom, your guidance, and more importantly, Father, we thank you for your presence. We need your presence in Santa Clarita, God. I once again lift up the leaders of this city as they make decisions. I pray for our law enforcement. I pray for our hospitals, our ambulances, our pastors, our leaders, those that are reporting the news to this city. And we pray, Father, that you would just uh, bring us together as one big team, Amen. a team that loves our city, a team that loves the people of the city a team that knows how to pray for the schools of our city, Father. We plead the blood of Jesus over every single school, every elementary, every junior high, every high school. We pray your divine protection over it, Father. We thank you that there's going to be a shift of awareness, that you will quicken every single one of our spirit. And Lord, I thank you that we're going to turn the tables on the devil. We're going to see a light out of all this darkness. We're going to see the hope that we have in Jesus. You are the anchor for our life, Father. Help us to hold on strong to you. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Listen, we love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And don't forget this coming Sunday, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, right here in Old Town New Hall, right on 8th and Main Street. Check us out. You can go to our website at elevatechurchscv.org. That's elevatechurchscv.org. And uh, if you need more information, you can view that there or call us at the church office if you need help. I'm sure they're posting it on our media platforms, but we're here for you. We love you. And remember, we have to stay united because we're better together. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. Good night.